Sydney Airport is a buzz. It's Friday, and we're off to the footy. My thoughts on the flight turn to Brisbane. For weeks now I've been wondering about this Lions team, how well they have played for most of the year, and how, at some point, surely, they would clock up the all-important four points, hoping it wouldn't be against us this weekend. Fortunately, those fears were allayed last week, when they finally made their mark, and rose from the bottom of the ladder to annihilate Hawthorne. How sweet it was for a Swans fan. I'm sure we all rejoiced seeing our nemesis of a team these past few years get belted by the kids from Brisbane Town, and seeing Clarkson's grumpy face on the big screen, wondering who he might turn to next to vent his frustrations. I've also been wondering about Brissy, our home for 22 years before moving to Sydney to be closer to the Bloods in 1998. It's always good to be back, back to that once sleepy hollow, where everything closed at 6pm, and the only way a Swans fan could watch her team play on a Saturday our vote was to drive to Tweed Heads on the NSW border, where Channel 7 would sometimes broadcast the matches being played in Sydney in the 80s and early 90s. How times have changed. The city is now almost unrecognizable. The Gabba, once a dog-tracked cricketing patch, is yet another beaming, sanitized modern stadium. Footy can now be seen without having to cross state lines. Fitzroy died and the Brisbane Bears became the Lions, the best in the land in their triple premiership years. And, yes, the sun is still shining in this northern, now sophisticated metropolis. But more importantly, my beloved team has gone from strength to strength since I called Brisbane home, and in the 30-odd years since the VFL dumped South Melbourne and Sydney, blood supporters can now proudly rejoice in our sustained success. Success since 1996 that has culminated in over 60,000 members joining our great club. Who would have thought? But now, sitting amongst the red and white family here at the Gabba, hoping we can continue our current form, especially away from home, surely the Swans boys will take these young lions very seriously today. Surely? And, as happy as I was last week with their victory, there's no way I want even a murmur of a roar this Saturday afternoon. Queensland's catchphrase, beautiful one day, perfect the next, certainly applies today, assuming your idea of rain and a coolish 17 degrees is beautiful. The sun shone in the morning and although rain was not predicted, it is certainly drizzling now, affecting clean ball handling and smooth transition. However, our three goals to Will, Rox and Paps, our young up-and-coming champs, in the first term, belie the not-so-perfect conditions. Brisbane kicks two, and with our four-point lead at quarter time, this definitely isn't going to be a walkover. The second quarter, with the rain returning, sees our now-established champions, taking a great grab 40 meters out, goaling, and then adding another six-pointer not long later. Our 2.3 to Brisbane's mere 2 points, gives us a lead of 18 points, and although we're ahead, I'm feeling just a tad nervous at halftime. The rain has finally stopped, and when our latest young debutante, Riley Stard, kicks his first goal, the hair ruffling from his teammates starts in all seriousness. A wonderful goal. With the biggest lead of the game, our boys then become a bit sloppy, and for a while there are errors aplenty, resulting in valuable points to the opposition. It's still way too close, for my liking, but I find myself yelling a definitive, yes, when Buddy adds a goal to our score, and minutes later, that's better, when one of my very favorites, Will Hayward, marks courageously in between two Lions, giving us a 23-point lead at three-quarter time. I'm really quite nervous going into the last term. Well, quite is an understatement. I am extremely nervous. Brisbane goals, I swear. Rocks goals, and I scream another, yes, I moan a few times about the number of frees the other mob is getting, or we're giving away, and then, another goal to them. 
Not good enough, I groan, as I nudge my husband's arm, all too roughly, he complains. Yes, Kiza, you beauty. Car in the bloods, we just have to win this, is the best I can do, and halfway through the quarter, after Buddy has a little brain fade, kicking a short nothing kick straight to the opposition, this game is on the line. For what seems like eternity, the ball spends its time in the Lions' forward half, as they attack, attack, attack. There are amazing smothers and lunges from our boys, and the contest is ferocious. It is breathtaking and heart-stopping stuff, and only when we manage to get the ball out of there, I feel I can actually breathe. But he gets a free, and with the local booing echoing around the Gabba, he misses, with 27.40 on the clock. The Lions keep attacking, but, as they've done for most of the quarter, they miss the goals. The siren finally sounds, and I am mightily relieved. I am sure our blood brothers are relieved as well. This has been a tough match, in tough conditions. Those young lions were impressive and never gave up, and their supporters certainly have a lot to look forward to. But just not today. Today is about the swans being more precise and more accurate, even the aspects of our game left a little to be desired. Today is also about our backline and their tireless and relentless pursuit for perfection. They certainly stood up today. As cheer cheer blares out around the ground, I stand beside my singing swans brothers and sisters, and hold up my brand new Go Bloods banner. A handheld banner that thousands upon thousands of swans fans will hopefully soon be raising proudly at all swans games. Imagine the scene, a sea of red and white banners illuminating each and every stadium wherever we play, what a sight that would be, and what an inspiration for our players. This wonderful supporter-led initiative, Go Bloods Banner Supporters Group has been implemented for passionate Swan supporters to unite to ensure a louder and more physical presence at our games, after our captain Joey Kennedy stated this year at the Guernsey presentation and Hall of Fame dinner that he wanted our supporters to be more vocal. And vocal we are, as we sing out loud, on this now mild, clear-skied Brisbane night, celebrating yet another away-from-home win. What more can I say, but go Bloods, Jan Corton, a passionate lifelong Swans fan, moved to Sydney to be closer to her team in 1998. In the same year that her book was launched by the Swans, she was chosen Female Fan of the Year by the AFL Fans Association. Her website, http colon slash slash www.myswanslofeaffair.com slash you can read more great Sydney Swans fan reviews at footyalmanac.com.au